Before we begin this video, I'd like to let you know that my book, The Art of the Travel Journal, is available at bookstores worldwide. All links will be in the description. Here's a little peek at what you can find inside. It's basically a guidebook to travel journaling that I created for you to get inspired and have ideas on how to document about your trips. I do hope you check it out and support my work. Now let's get started. This is gonna be a little catch up journal with me um, with my quote unquote travel journal. I don't know if it's a travel journal but I definitely want to show you how I've been documenting. You can also find the before the pen process of this particular video on my Patreon. This helps support the channel and is available for my VIP members. So I also got a lot of questions from you guys about TN, so I thought I'd answer them in this video in particular. So let's get right into it. Um, these are sent in by most of you on Instagram and also on my Patreon. The first one is, how do you do your collages for it not to bulk too much on the insert? That's a good question. I think what I try to do with the collages that I create on the Traveler's Notebook spreads, as you can see, is they're not super bulky. So anything that's a bit too bulky, for example, uh, coasters or very thick pieces of paper, I try to just cut a small portion of it or not use the entirety of it. I also try to use an alternate of printed photos and Instax photos because Instax can be a bit bulky in that regard. Um, I don't know. I don't try to control the bulkiness, actually. I, I'm not super particular with that, but I do know that I don't make it super chunky. So that's something I try to kind of like gauge when I'm working on the journals. And also like when you're working like a few pages and you'll see, oh, it's a bit thick now. So then you can decide to um, how to like lessen it as the next as you flip through the next pages. Second one is, what is your favorite type of paper? Well, obviously, it is this one. This is the MD Paper Cream. It's number 25 for the standard size. It's cream, so I just like that it's not white. I, I tend to like cream-colored paper more for journaling. It's also why my own journal that I produce, The Diarist, is also cream paper. Uh, next question is, how much space do you use when you travel? For example, in your travel inserts like Tokyo or New York, do you have spreads just for collage? So how many pages do you usually do for a day? Um, that really depends on the trip in general and how much I'm going to be using the entire journal for the trip or it will be a mix. I don't do it per day unless the day was very important for example let's say we go to a really nice theme park that day so i'm gonna dedicate a spread for that because obviously there's a lot to document but sometimes it can be a combination of okay i'm gonna make this spread all of the coffee shops i went to you know just like little uh tidbits of it i think the space really doesn't matter to me because I don't like to pre-plan. As ironic as it is, I do plan my life, but I don't really plan my journal pages. I just try to see how everything fits. It's kind of a gut feeling kind of thing. Although I understand that can be a very um, abstract and vague advice. So um, if you're starting, I really recommend just like listing down all the things you want to document about because it really depends on the type of traveler you are. I think that's really important to know. For example, some people really like traveling and just documenting about food or architecture or coffee shops or stationery shops or specific attractions. I think I'm a mix of all in a sense that whenever I go to a certain city, I always look for my ABCs, right? It's art, books, and coffee. And anything that like falls under those categories just allow me to, you know, make space to document about these things because these are the ones that I really um, enjoy. You also notice that in my journals, I talk a lot also about nature. I really love um, flowers, parks, seasons. So that's something I also try to incorporate. So I don't know if that answers your question, but I usually, maybe at most for a trip, like for example, for like a short four day weekend or something, I, I do maybe like two to three spreads. And then the longer the trip is, the more spreads I make. But I don't, um, I don't really count it. Next question, can you use acrylic paint or aquarelle on the papers? 
Um, I personally don't because I'm not a huge fan of the paper wrinkling. I wish I used it more. I feel like my watercolor phase has slowly been kept behind. I don't know if I will go back to watercolor or painting because I really just enjoy sketching at the moment. You can use it but I also recommend just not using too much water because it could affect the, um, the quality of the paper and you might have to skip a few pages for that. Did keeping a traveler's notebook make you made you develop new ideas for your creativity? Yes, because of the size. I think that was the primary reason that got me to keep using the traveler's notebook format. Because before this, I did journal a bit on A5 for travel, but I, I found it just too bulky to bring around. And when I first used the Traveler's Notebook around 2016, wow, it's like seven years ago, I wanted a very uniform size for all of my documentation. So now having all of them in the regular size, do you say regular or standard? I keep forgetting. But the, the regular size basically is really um, good because it allows me also to play around with the types of ephemera I collect, you know, um, when I travel, I always see like, okay, will this fit my TN? Or like, working around a very specific size, canvas size is really helpful in the sense of you create limits for your creativity, which is also a good thing if you think about it because people think you can, you know, creativity is boundless and everything. Like, yes, but also I like setting myself up into like specific limits so I don't go overboard and I don't get... I guess decision fatigue when it comes to documenting in general. How do you come up with page composition or placement of ephemera in sketches? Any inspirations from the art or from the journaling community? Also tips on writing straight on a blank page. Okay, these are a lot of questions. The first one is, how do I come up with page composition? I don't know, I just basically pick out, for example, if I will journal about a certain thing on this page, I will pick out like three to four elements, like a photo, a ticket, a map, or something. And then I don't glue everything in yet, I try to like work around the page. In some way, it's kind of like an analog version of InDesign because I love doing editorial work and like... Um, I also used to do a lot of layout work because I worked in books before and I love looking at magazines. I think these are very um, important, not important, but like for me, they're, they're really um, beneficial in that sense that I look at magazines for layout inspiration. I also look a lot on Pinterest. I don't really have specific journaling inspirations. Some of my good friends... Um, Job of Jobs Journal and also VA of Memi Ends. They also share a lot of journal pages. So usually we compare. Also K, um, we are we call ourselves the Granny Gang. So sometimes we share journal pages on our WhatsApp group, which was really nice. Um, I think it's just um, this like constant, uh, you know, asking yourself how you can um, elevate pages and also. I try to look at a lot of Japanese journal pages for some reason. I don't know, because there's some kind of neatness in the chaos. Does that make sense? And I really like that because at the end of the day, I don't want my journal pages to be just like a hodgepodge of stuff. I want it to be a readable piece of art. Do you say it's art? I don't know. A readable piece of uh, material. And so that's what I try to do when it comes to my journal pages uh tips on writing straight on a blank page honestly i don't really have any tips for this um when i was really young i feel like i got um indirectly trained to write straight on a blank page because actually when i first started doing penmanship my mom would ask me to write on gift tags 
for you know birthday birthday greeting cards or gift tags for like presents for friends and for family so there was always no line right so she always like okay you have to write it like this and kind of estimate it so i think i kind of got used to it over time but honestly you don't really have to write straight on a blank page like there are no rules i don't really think it's really important if you're very wary about this then i suggest getting a dotted or grid insert so that you can be um, a bit more guided with the lines because I used to use the grid um, insert a lot before for journaling also because it was just easier to place the photos you know if you wanted to put photos or stick elements that you wanted to be straight or a certain orientation then I think it's really useful to have that um, guide when you're starting and then eventually you can just get a blank insert to you know continue on your journaling journey what glue do you use gel like uhu or double tape is more preferable uh it really depends i just reach for the tape glue glue tape out of convenience i actually have a bunch of them maybe i should do a video of the tools that i use maybe in future videos let me know if that's something you're interested in i use a different type of glue tape i have norino i have tessa tessa is a german brand i also have kukuyo i actually have no preference the only thing i like about the kukuyo one except the refills are hard to find in germany is that the um it's removable so if i don't want to stick stuff on i want to take it out i can use it so that's the type of glue tape that i got but for hard to glue ephemera for example like really sturdy maps or so i still use glue stick i have uhu i also have the regular like white glue just in case there are some more stubborn pieces of packaging that i need to kind of um put on a page so i do have a variety of glue but if i had my way out of um portab for portability reasons i just prefer the glue tape um in general do you journal while traveling or do you do it after um i it depends if i am on a really long trip and i don't want to be caught up in like a lot of backlog i will journal halfway throughout the trip or i will just log a bit of information on my uh, passport notebook because i have a log and that really helps me kind of um separate all the things i want to you know organize and also give me time to like okay i want to make a page about this because once you travel you're like oh yeah the more you travel the more you get a lot of inspiration and ideas on what to specifically document about so you kind of like build it up as you go along i mean if you make your itinerary you also know like okay we're going to this park i want to you know make a page about this part so i tend to do it while i'm on the trip especially when i'm drawing i feel like there's something about like drawing in a hotel room that's like kind of a ritual to me i've been doing it since 2017 uh when i was when we were in eastern europe traveling over the holidays i was like staying up until midnight drawing like in my zone and I, that was really nice i really enjoy that i still remember it. it's like core memory in my head um, I do it after if it's something that I really know I have to film. I think that's one thing that I always just leave behind. I have to film it, so therefore I'll do it after. But I also do it after if I know that the trip itself is very hectic. For example, when I went to San Francisco for two weeks, that was really hectic because we also went to Portland and there were a lot of things happening during that time. So I wasn't really able to journal while I was there in the US. So I finished it up like over a weekend in berlin when i got back um someone is asking do you prefer one size over the other or does it just depend on what you're using it for i want to use a traveler's notebook for a commonplace journal and i don't know which size would be best i think if you're using it for a commonplace journal although the idea of a commonplace journal could differ for everyone my my thought is like it will be an all-in-one journal for you I think the regular size is better because you'd have more space to write out ideas and notes and findings. Passport is merely for portability. I also like it as a medium because it's really 
portable and it's cute. I also love making spreads with it because it's so experimental. But I understand that it could be a small size for some people or for most people, mainly because of the canvas size. And let's say if you have big handwriting, it's not really ideal to use on passport or you might run out of space. So I personally don't prefer one size over the other. It's just that I'm more used to the regular one. However, I really also want to try using more passport ones. So we'll see how that fares out. I want to constantly play around these um, different sizes depending on the trips that I'm taking in the next few months and later this year. Someone is asking, and this is probably the last question, how has the way you use your inserts changed over the years? What have you learned about how you like to use them? So I used my traveler's notebook inserts for a lot of things. Actually everything. I used to write work notes. I used it as a planner. I used it for just um, writing video ideas, for tutorials, for classes. I used to write notes like when I attend online classes, I write notes there. And I realized that it's not ideal for writing, like for note taking. It's not my thing. It's like every time I think of a traveler's notebook, it's really just for memory keeping for me and sketching. And I like it that way. Like everything else that requires work, ideation, it has to be an A5 size. It's used to usually, usually Hobonichi or Leuchtturm. So um, I think I learned this the hard way because then I had to use several different inserts and really um, weed out what I want and really want out of the notebook format. I used a lot during the pandemic because, you know, you were home and we're all home and like I didn't know what to do with the inserts. So I tried doing a lot of things with it. I also had a food journal. I think that worked out really nicely. Um, and I also had notes journal because I abandoned my planner. Who else abandoned their planner during the pandemic? Because, you know, there's nothing to plan. So, um, yeah, I learned that I just like to use them for creative endeavors. And this is fine, you know. It, I can't also guarantee that um, it's a one-size-fits-all situation. So that I really realized over the years. So I hope you enjoyed this chatty Q&A catch-up video format. I don't know, it's my first time doing something like this. Here are the finished pages of my first TN spreads for the year. That's not daily. How do you even explain that? But yeah, this is kind of like my travel journal first edition for 2023. I hope you enjoyed this video and catching up with me on journaling. Um, make sure to check out my other videos on journaling and travel and you can always find more ideas and inspiration on my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash abc. It's the best way to support this channel and my creative career. Thank you so much to everyone for watching. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next video. Bye!